Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at Keyshot 10. Keyshot 10 is finally here and there is a couple of features that are now available for Keyshot. These features are interesting from keyframe animation all the way to animating your environment down to where you can do some light mixing in case you want to do that. And also there are some updates to the move tool and at the same time there are updates to the real clock and today we're going to take a look at some of these features do a simple walkthrough with them and we will be doing this alongside some free models that we've got from qbrush and if you would like to get these free models i'm going to put a link in the description where you can get them and of course there's going to be a coupon code down in the description so in case you want to get 20 percent off your first purchase from qbrush you can simply use that coupon code to get 20 percent off from any of the content creators now the content which we're going to be making use of for today is coming from scene new gen and he is an amazing 3d artist and with that said let's dive directly into keyshot and take a look at some of the cool features that are now here and by the way if you would like to get keyshot you can simply hit the trial button and you can get a trial version of keyshot which you can use for free for 14 days so with keyshot simply opened right here everything looks the same there is no change for the ui the ui is exactly how we you know how we've always seen it but there are certain tiny updates that you would notice. First off, if you look up here, you would notice that, you know, the tools now have a different icon. And also, you can also notice that we have a brand new light manager. Now, we need a model to work with. And for that, we will need to fire up ZBrush, where we have a model from Scene again. I've actually gone in there to go make some changes to the colorings just to fit what I want. And then we would go over to render because, you know, you can also use the Keyshot bridge alongside with this and click on Keyshot and hit the BPR button to send all of these over to Keyshot. Now, once that is there in Keyshot, we open up Keyshot, this is going to load in and we can start doing some stuff. First things I would like to show you guys is this, that right now, if you would like to solo certain parts of your model, if you simply click, right click, you can actually solo those parts now. So at this point, if you like to solo your model, you can do that. And if you right click and click on, you know, exit solo, you can easily do that. And it's good to see that there's a shortcut button to that. So if you press S, you can do that. Press S, you can come back. Although before now, this was actually possible, but it wasn't solo. If you hold down Alt and click, you can actually solo things. So just in case you were wondering if this was possible before, yes, it was. So that is how you regularly solo things previously, but now it's very cool to see that there's a button attached to that. Something else which is also cool is the environment. So at any point in time, you might want to animate your environment. Now it is even easier. So what you need to do is if you have any environment, so let's go over to the environment, click and drag any environment and drop it right here. So because we have an environment now, so if you like to animate this environment, you can now click on the plus button, click on the environment section, right click, and you now notice we have animation. So with the add animation, you can now do an environment rotation, which pops up the animation you know, bar, which is the timeline. And if you press the playback button, you can now see that you have your environment animating. So instead of animating or doing a turntable for your model, right now you can actually do a turntable for your environment. And this is very nice for product presentation and stuff. Now, speaking about things that are also very nice in terms of the environment, you can also go in there. So let's actually get rid of that. You can also go in there and add a sun and sky animation to your environment. So if I also right click and go over to animation, I can add a sun and sky arc animation to my environment so if i do that click on ok you also notice that it has something like so which is attached to that and at this point if i press the playback button it now animates so let's actually turn off our original one which is what we have here and press the playback button and now you can also see that animating and if you don't want to see this all right maybe you don't want to see you know the environment that you have there if you go over to environment you can actually change this to a simple color and you have that color but then the sun and sky animation still happens and depending on what you want Maybe if you like to use this for uh, an interior shot, you like to use this for a product shot, this is also very, very lovely. And while we're speaking about animation and, you know, within the aspect of animation, there is also updates to the animation. So if we simply delete all of that and, you know, let's just simply close this one right now and actually close this one. If you have a simple object, you can now easily animate the entire object by simply using keyframe. Now, this is one of the things that a lot of people have asked for, and it's good to see that the folks at at Luxion, creators of Keyshot, the listened and they implemented this. So how does this work? This works pretty easy. Select the object that you want, right click, and you can go over to add animation and select keyframe. Now, before we used to have, you know, the regular turntable, transition, rotation, fade, and all that, but now you have keyframe. So with the keyframe, I can click and have a keyframe. And now you would also notice, you know, we have a move tear out window. So this is also very nice. 
at any point in time you like to animate you can animate this thing easily so as it is right now if you like to do a translate you can do that if you like to do a rotate you can do that if you like to do a scale you can also do that so let's simply do a simple translation and of course for the translation you can actually do your translation from one point to another so what we need to do is take the playhead and move the playhead to where we want it to be so i'm just going to move this to about three seconds and at this point you can also choose to use the add keyframe button right here so if i add this keyframe button i can click on translate and translate this object from one point to another now once you start making this translation it's very interesting to see that there is a timeline motion trail that you get to see or you know a keyframe motion trail that you get to see so you can do that and we can also move this playhead to any point at all so depending on what you want push that right there move this playhead to any point okay move it to a point like this and then if you also click on the button which you have right here you can also make some changes so you can make changes like this and then if you bounce this all the way back and press the playback button you would notice that you have an animation happening so this is very very useful for a lot of use cases and of course this would come in very handy especially for those who like to animate parts and you want those parts to come in together and you don't want to go in and start doing this thing in different application before bringing them directly into key shots for rendering this would also become very very useful so with that said let's take a look at light so there is a brand new light manager right here but before we talk about the light manager let's talk about some improvements to the spotlight so if you want to add spotlight right now you need to go over to edit go all the way down here to add light and then you can click to add spotlight now there are some very interesting things you would notice the spotlight once you add one it comes with the move gizmo which you can now work with so you can use the move gizmo right now and or should i call it the transform gizmo so you can use the transform gizmo to actually do some transformation and at any point in time you would like to dial things up and down there is a widget that exists here and you can use it and you can choose to keep this as it is or just simply click on ok to just get rid of it you can increase the radius if you like if you want to also increase the fall off you can also do that and at the same time if you want to increase or reduce how far the light is going to shine of course you can do all of these things if you also want to make changes to this you can do that by going over to where we have the materials and then double click make sure that you have the lights there and then you can make changes for this case i might want to make this about let's get a code color so we can get a code color like this and then we can set this to 1000 in terms of wattage now how does this work so how the light manager works is very interesting if you have multiple lights in your scene and you would like to control them you can also do that so i'm also going to add a simple point light like so and of course you can also notice that all of these light features now contain gizmo which would make it even easier for you to move things around Around. so i can go back and select the point and then move this one about a point like so let me just move this one right here about a simple point like this and then click on ok and jump all the way so with the light mixer you can mix a couple of extra lights and for this one let's also add in a very simple light so i'm just going to add in a point light so we have a point light right here i can move this point light wherever i want it to be and you can also see that it has the gizmo thingy and i can also position this one right about the point like this and then there's also some very interesting things about lights right now that you need to know if i click on ok there is also a gizmo that can control the radius of the light interactively directly on your viewport so no more you know going over to properties going over to the material section to do that of course if you go over to the material section you can also do that so i can double click and also increase the radius from here so for this one let's say we want to give it a different color probably a color of uh, let's get a color that doesn't match with that okay so we can give it a color like this and i will set this to wattage as well and maybe set it all the way to 1000 so what happens if you click on the light manager right now you can actually control all of the lights this is something that a lot of people have always wanted to see and it's good to see that we have this one here if you want to control the radius you can control the radius from here if you want to control the brightness of your original environment you can also turn that down so we can turn this down and you can also do a couple of mix and matching and at the same time if you want to make changes to the color you can also interactively make changes to the color and this is just beautiful so you can get some very cold color if you want and if you want to get some warm color you can also do that so let's run this over to this part get that one there click right here and maybe we can also make 
make this one a little bit colder and you know that way you can have things working for you now at the same time if you want to match this with textures you can do that there's also a very tiny plus button here which you can select and by simply double clicking this it selects the object directly within your scene and then if you would like to make changes to that of course you can there is also things that has to do with rotation for your environment and this one is very handy so in case you want to rotate your environment you can do that and of course that's not visible because we don't have a visible environment right there so let's just go in and throw in this one because it's going to be something very visible on the viewport go back to environment and set this to lighting environment so right now if we also crank this all the way up you know you can see that and if you like to rotate this it's now easier to rotate this and it actually limits your mouse traveling time before how you get to work with this is just very annoying because you have to throw in that light you have to go over here you have to go over to transform and start doing the rotation but now it's easier because you know with the light manager things like this just actually makes life way way better so this is the light manager and just like we said earlier if you would like to make changes you can actually do these changes from here so with the light manager out of the way let's also take a look at some updates to the real cloth so to do that we're going to simply go over to edit go all the way down to where we have add geometry and then we can add a simple sphere and by simply adding that sphere right there on the viewport i would like to scale this sphere a bit move this over to a point like so position this one right about here and let's just zoom right into it so i'm just going to go in and take a look at that okay so with this one here what we can do is we can now click drag and drop directly there this is very very cool so at any point in time you would like to use the real cloth to drive certain things on your you know on your model maybe you want some clothes you want some knitting you want some you know stitching stuff yep you can now do this and best of all there is also very cool improvement to the fours so if i also double click on the real cloth and go over to our material graph you can also do some very cool stuff with the geometry nodes so if i right click and go over to geometry get the force and connect this force right here i can also double click on the force and also play with a couple of things in terms of length radius and also density and once you're done with that you can simply compile this by clicking on this button and that will be applied directly in your viewport if we would like to reduce the length we can also do that and also recompile this and you can also get this and the fact that this now happens instantaneously and very very quick is very pretty nice compared to the previous version of keyshot where sometimes this actually takes a bit of time to happen this one happens really really cool so for the radius we can also drop the radius down about a point like so and also recompile this and then you would notice that we're also getting some cool stuff there is also some very cool updates that has been implemented to the denoising and that one is cool there's also implementation to and for sure there's also some very interesting update that's been added for example the gpu denoising like right now we have the gpu turned on the denoising is way faster and better and there's also some very cool improvement that's been added for example the gpu denoising now works even way better you can simply turn on your gpu and this will analyze the scene and start rendering and speaking about things that are also cleaner the fireflies are now even way less these are some of the improvements that are now available with keyshot take a look at improvements for the caustics as this one now works even way better and for sure there is a multiple bounce effect that is now available i mean you can take a look at the before and the after right here and you can see what this looks like and there is now a new and a well improved tune material that you can use so if you like to read more about this you can simply go over to the link in the description where you can see this and at the same time you can also go over to the manual where you get to see the what's new in the release notes and you can read these things up for yourself and for sure if you're into 3d printing or maybe you're using usd z file for mobile augmented reality you're not out of luck because right now you can now export your keyshot files out as usd z and you can also also preview this on the web as gltf and at the same time you can also export as glb so these are like the updates that are available right now you can simply go over to the link in the description take a look at these and if you want to get any of these models that you have here if you want to get the free ones you can also get the free ones here i'm going to put a link in the description where you can get them and for sure if there are any ones within qbrush that you like to take a look at yes you can and you can actually get 20 percent off your first purchase by simply using the link in the description and the coupon code right there and so tell me what you guys think about these in the comment section the folks at Luxion have done something really really nice I love the idea that they actually 
glistening and added the keyframe animation thingy and also added the light mixing stuff so just in case you like to mix your lights and probably you want to get the best out of it you can now easily work with these things and also the idea of adding gizmos to the light is also something very very impressive and i'm quite excited about it Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with the tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace